Well, okay, my friends, this is as serious as it gets. We're talking about cancer. They just launched a $150 million um, funding for this cancer you know, suppression, how to stop cancer. First of all, they want to create these machines that can see when they're doing the actual operation if they had got all the cancer. Now, that's fabulous. However, I want to see if we can stop it before the cancer grows and can we bring it back after the cancer starts. And I think we might be able to. I, this is just research. There's no no medical advice given here, but I'm going to show you what the research does indicate. And it does indicate that we need a database for bacteria. Let's get into it. Now remember this, there's over 200 different types of cancers. And the reason in my mind is because every organ has its own different special fascia that surrounds it, which when it's penetrated, you get cancer. That's why there's cancer of the breast cancers, there's lung cancer, there's pancreatic cancer. Every, every organ has its own cancer. And they all have their own membranes. Okay, I'm going to make this extremely simple. We have 200 types of cancers. Everyone relates to a different body part, different, you know, membranes, basically. And why are the membranes different? They're protecting different types of chemistry. Now, these are the membranes. This is what cancer is. It breaks through the membrane tissue and it starts breaking through, breaking through, breaking through. And when it gets to this layer, this different colored layer right here, it goes through there, you're done. All right? They never knew that this layer here has a gooey substance right on the top of it called, they call it now the interstitium, which is a fluid-filled fabric highway which controls all the lymph fluids. And if they get past that lymph fluid, they go right through you. And they, do, they can get through that if you have loose cellular junctions. What that means is all your body is held together with little cells and they glue to each other and they can go around like this in these membranes but if they open up you get attacked. Let me try to be a little more illustrative. Okay this is a phospholipid bilayer. These are the membranes. This is literally a membrane. So this coats all your organs, all your, even your red blood cells are coated with a membrane just like this. Now what does it do? It only allows things it wants to allow in through these protein channels and it keeps everything else out. So what is everything else? Everything else could be all kinds of stuff and some of it is very destructive to you and can destroy what's inside the cell because inside is what's called a cytoplasm is where all your organelles are and all the things that make the cell function if you let the bad stuff in well it's case closed for the cell now the other problem is you got to let the good bad stuff out because you're making all kinds of stuff in here, nasty stuff, you got to get out and go to the lymph nodes to get cleaned up and all that business. So it's an in and out deal. But these right here, they should never open up. They should be able to float around and do all this and, blah, 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 and slide back and forth, but never come apart. And that's where you're going to have invasion. That's why I believe the, back, the, the, the bad bacteria and the bad things are... are are um, opportunistic and looking for holes and if they see a little hole in a membrane right through they go and then they invade you and once they're on the other side and if you don't have the bacteria the whole key is you don't have the bacteria you don't have the enzymes you don't have the enzymes i don't care what you do you're not going to protect yourself so we need to know what bacteria everybody has in their body and get a bacterial database and then we can see w what does it affect because they're going to create the enzymes. The enzymes are the, bacteria, are the uh, chemistry that do unbelievable amount of things instantaneously. And they're working with the half-lives of molecules that are in your body, which are all the little bits and pieces in between the stable atoms. That's what they work with. 
the enzymes go and they change something into something else almost instantaneously. Like the food coming into you doesn't come into you as edible food. It comes to you as whatever comes out of the ground. And then it goes and breaks it all down and then builds it right back up, these enzymes. Absolutely phenomenal what they can do. And without the bacteria, you don't get the enzymes. We don't have a database, I don't think, that we can rely on. And then we don't have any testing to see what people have for bacteria. Now, I'm going to show you what I am going to propose. So basically, what we want to know is what is in this layer and the layer below, which is the membrane. This is the fluid-filled highway that floats on top. They, they call this the, capilla, um, the, the capillary bed, I believe is what they're referring it to. This is where the membranes and enzymes live. I mean, I'm sorry, this is where the bacteria and the enzymes live. And these are what we need to do. I think I showed you this before. This affects all diseases. This is not just for cancer. It's not just for autism. It's not just for this or that. It's any, anything that can break through your system of this stuff can attack you. And this stuff has to have the right bacteria and the right enzymes. It's as simple as that. And if you don't have the right bacteria in there, you're open to invasion. That's why you get sick. The next guy next to you, same stuff, eating the same food, drinking the same water, breathing the same air, no sick. Because he's, he, or maybe just a little bit sick and then he gets better. You don't get better. You don't have enough immune bacteria to create the enzymes you need. So we need to do this study. We need swabs and, you know, I did the whole thing before, I'm sure. We need a database as soon as possible. The, and this is not expensive. This is not a big deal. $150 million. We, we, we don't need $150 million. It, it, but the, I know they need, obviously, everything costs money. Now, I don't want to be involved in any money whatsoever. But I do have people that are doing this right now. And they are looking for money, I can guarantee you. And, and, and they are good people. As far as I know, they would be 100% upright and honest. This is all about working for the kids. And the one that is the main person that's running at Marguerite, her son was the subject of the study we originally did five or five at least years ago. And now he has recovered from the most serious of autism. He was, he was ready to go in a rubber room for the rest of his life at nine and a half years old, never spoke a word, off the charts, as bad as it gets. And and all, you know, he had the same thing they all have, their gut issues and pooping and all kind of problems. Well, we got that straightened out and within a month or so he came sort of back around and he's doing very, very well now. Certainly not in a pad of room or any of that stuff. And she's helped approximately, she claims now, 500 different families over there without any assistance from anybody, as far as I know. And they're giving $150 million. I, I think we should invest something here. Now, I have a triple PhD bacterial um, engineer, my friend Andy, who is working with us on this project with Northern Ireland. He may want to get involved. I don't want to get too much deeper into this. I just do the research, and I got a lot of other things to do. I don't want to get involved in money or administration or any of that stuff. That is out of my realm, and I'm not... I'm not good at it anyway. Now, this though is what we need to do is find out, and this will all be coming through the poop. It all comes out in the fecal swabs primarily, but you might want a nasal swab and throat and who knows what. You may, you may we even need blood samples, but whatever it is, it's better than doing all this just guesses. Right now, it's basically guesses. Once we had a database, if we saw one was way up here and it shouldn't be, well, why? This is just so obvious to me. I can't believe they're not doing this. And a fecal transplant is, um, it's hard to believe that that's just being missed or, or well, right now it's I illegal. It's not approved. The only thing they approve it for is C. diff. And uh, it's very extremely effective. So, okay, $150 million research and I know what they're doing they're trying to make these new machines that can see did they get all the cancer when they do the operation well I would like to see them not have to do the operation and the only way to see them do that is to get to the source of what causes cancer and I believe it is invasion of the membrane is is invasion I mean there is really no other way to put it it's just it's just it's quite obvious so so this is how you get a hold of me 
and we need to do a very inexpensive fecal swabs, you know, um, oral, whatever. Get ever whatever you can figure out is living in the person's body of bacteria. The bacteria do all the, the they create the ribosomes. So this is very very simple when you break it down. Then we need a database. We need a database. Where do all these bacteria fit? How much is in there? Quantities and so forth. We need to know people's medical conditions based on this. Now there should be some kind of a database level that'll be sort of normal for healthy people. And if you see somebody way up here or way down here, well, now you've got uh, at least something to look at. And I believe it's, they're related to all chronic conditions are invasion of, of your membranes. They're chronically invaded and, and inflamed and all that. And, and most of it, I believe, is due to the tight junctions so that you, you're, you're invadable. If the tight, nothing gets through. Now, all, so I say basically it's all chronic diseases, everything, all diseases. Now, most invasions are stopped because of the bacterial enzymes you have stop them. But if you don't have the bacteria, you're done. The enzymes are what stops the invaders. The bacteria create the enzymes. I mean, just follow the clues. We need a database ASAP. Once we have that database, all we have to do is take these swabs, these tests from the person and say, how does your stuff fit into the database of what everybody normally has? And if you got high or low, well, then we got something we can look at. What would be the source of that? All right, I love you all. We need to get this done. And all we need, and I, I, you know, we have a little network of people that I've been working with about this, specifically targeted for autism for over five years. And um, anyway, if you need to get a hold of me, here it is right here. And I, I have the people to contact that might be able to, to help to some degree. But I don't really care who does the research. I mean, who does the, well, research. And we need a database. That's all I care about. Whoever does it doesn't matter to me. So get a hold of me. We have a lot of research on our own to share. And, you know, obviously I'm not looking for anything out of this whatsoever. None of the people I work with are. We're doing this for the kids, primarily for the kids with autism. And we've had some very, very good success. So um, if you need to me, there it is, roger at mudfossils.com. Thank you. I love you all.